What's going on, you guys? So, check it right. With Blackie officially signing to Def Jam Records, a lot of people have wondered whether he made the right decision, considering that he gained so much success being managed by M4 Entertainment. Now, Blackie, who hails from Durban, he began his career around 2019. He gained considerable attention and recognition in the South African music scene through his captivating performances and online presence, especially through SoundCloud. Blackie's rise to prominence was facilitated by his talent for effortlessly combining multiple languages, including Zulu and English in his music. This cultural fusion resonated with both local and international audiences. One of his breakthrough moments came with the release of his hit single, Big Time Schlapper, which garnered significant airplay and solidified his position as a rising star. Blackie's unique style, lyrical prowess, and ability to incorporate infectious melodies into his music helped him gain a loyal fan base. Additionally, his collaboration with prominent artists such as Nasty C and Flame further contributed to his growing success. Now, with him still being an artist on the come up, he gives himself credits for knowing the ins and outs of the music business as well as also owning his mind. Masters. Anyway, listen, before we talk about your career, ne, I gotta ask every artist this now, so because we never know, eh? Mm-mm. Do you own your masters, bro? Yeah, I mean, I own my masters. You own your masters? I do. Okay. I do. So, but on iTunes, it says there's another company. M4. It, M4. That's my management. Oh, your management. Yeah. So, nothing they don't own the masters? Nah, it's nothing to do with Oh, like okay, cool. We don't want you coming out in a few years saying, no. hey, they robbed me. Nah, nah, nah. Eh? I know my, my, my stuff is straight. Yeah. Sounds fun, man. Yeah, I don't know. Smart, smart. Don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. But that's dope, dog, because, you know, a lot of people are going through shit with this master's thing, Yeah, bro. I see it. I see it. I see it going on. Well, what did you think when you heard, like, the rap life thing, what's been happening and all that as a young artist? Uh, I don't know. Like, I've, I've been hearing stories like that before I even got into making, like, music like that. So I made sure that even before, like, when I was dropping music, I was doing it, like, independently, like, using, like, stuff. Like online, you know, distributors and stuff like that, and I still get like cash from that, like even right now. Yeah. So, yeah, like when I when I heard that, I was like, ah, I don't know how these niggas like start off. <laughs> like, nah. you're supposed to know these things when you get into it. Yeah. So your split sheets are in order. Nah, me, I'm cooling, bro. Ah, I'm right. bowling. But isn't it? Isn't it harder to go independent though? It is harder, but then it's 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 the only way for me. Like it's the only it's the only right way mm. to do it. Mm. Yeah, but. You just yeah, you just have to go through it like as long as you know that your your shit is yours then yeah. Now it's crazy in hindsight that Blackie said doing things independently is the only way to do things, but here we are right now. But anyways, Blackie's come up as well documented with him being stranded in Joburg during lockdown due to COVID and with him being stuck in one spot, he managed to compile a bunch of songs which formed into his debut album, Before Now. So when he was in between Midran and Durban, he linked up with Lucas Raps, who he credits for hooking him up with a deal with M4 Entertainment and getting that introduction to Nandi, who is his manager and the owner of M4. So at the crib, man, I mean, I know Leo, we're staying here unannounced no one knows you're staying here like the people that actually own the house oh Nandi and everyone else that's sort of involved in mm. this whole EM4 thing. yeah M4 I asked me put on my outside with two I said I said I'm happy I'm dropping gum on Pep so Lucas actually had to fight um, Nandi and Pepper in yeah. terms of just like yo dog, this is the guy you know what what yeah. this is the guy speaking about me yeah. you know what I mean and, and this guy is with that guy so mm. they need to stay here yeah. in order for this thing to work because at the time Lucas was also try, trying to transition into a more like music music you know sort of space yeah. and you can see that I was like you know singing a lot also. so it's like yeah also you know songs yeah, for yeah. that album and stuff like that and I was like yeah yeah for sure the duo was making sense too yeah 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 so mm. yeah we ended up forcing it but um, sort of happened that Leo had to go back to Durban mm. Um, just cause you know what I mean it's just a big load you know what I mean at the time yeah yeah it got so, heavy and we had to mm. sacrifice Leo <laughs> <laughs> so actually yeah Fox will tell you I hit him up actually I was like yo Fox I heard I'm about it Leo has to go so I don't know must come next to you or what that's why you going to do it I hit him Kitty also whatever whatever and it was tight and I was like Ish. I was actually about to go to Kitty's place which is like the ambitious place funny mm. enough yeah, yeah. Um, and then the day after, Nandi pulled up and I was like, actually, no, you can stay here. If you go there, you're going to be making a mistake. So you might as well yeah. stay here and figure yourself out. Mm. And then a few weeks 
Leo can't stay. Yeah, no, Leo had to stay. Leo had to buy. Yeah. To buy, yeah. Damn, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> we hate it. Had to be you. Sort of. Bro, who's, who's, who's Nandi, nice bro? the next few years? Who's Nandi? How Nandi's my manager. Her? Nandi's M4. M4. How do you meet her? <laughs> um. So when I got to to Medran, where so Nandi is actually Lucas's former manager. Okay. Yeah. So she we likes the young, no? <laughs> I'm kidding, Daddy. <laughs> so when I got, so when I got, <laughs> yeah. so when I got here, like she was managing him, and they were staying in that same place we're staying now. Mm. And yeah, Lucas is like, yeah, Doug, you can't go back to Durban, whatever. And I was here with my friend Leo. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you can't go back to Durban, whatever. So then the whole situation happened, and then the thing was Leo had to bounce, so Leo left. So then I'm staying in Midran. Mm. So that's basically Nani's place, the place I be staying. Ah. At. So she used to come like often to check what's going on, and yeah. whatever. And then she used to see good type of money, you know. Yeah, okay. What are they doing here? Yeah, whatever. So. When when it came down to everything, like she was like, "Yo, you just uh, pull up on me, just have like a conversation nice. about what you're trying to do in Josie and whatever." Wow. And then yeah, that's that's how that's how I know. Wow. Then. So whilst he was at M4, Blackie managed to achieve so much success with his debut album, doing so well. I mean, he received so many plaques from his singles and projects. He's worked with international artists such as Earth Gang, Bass, and ASAP Ferg. He's also managed to travel overseas and connect with quite a few international artists. And he's considered as one of the leaders of the new wave and one of the most prominent artists in the game and country right now. So it came as a major shock when it was announced that he officially signed to Def Jam Records and no longer being a semi-independent artist. Now record labels don't really get the best reputation when it comes to looking after their artists. I mean, some disadvantages that we often hear about range from loss of creative control. When you sign with a record label, you may have to compromise on the creative direction of your music. I mean, Blackie is known for being versatile with his sound, and I would hate for him to be restricted just because of a contract he signed. Another disadvantage is the financial implications. Record labels typically provide an advance to artists, which is essentially a loan that needs to be recouped through sales. This can result in limited income for the artists until the advance is repaid, and the terms of recouping the advance can be unfavorable. There's also limited revenue sharing. Record labels often take a significant portion of an artist's revenue for music sales, merchandising and live performances. This can result in the artist receiving only a small percentage of their overall earnings. Now this all depends on what type of contract was signed and I'm hoping that it wasn't a 360 deal. Otherwise, what does really stand to benefit from this deal? Another disadvantage is contractual obligations. Record label contracts can be complex and may include terms that lock the artist into long-term commitments limiting their ability to work with other labels or release music independently and lastly there's also being shelved when an artist isn't the most popular in the game the label might end up restricting them from dropping any music leaving them in a state of limbo and essentially giving way for other artists in the label to drop or because they might be considered more popular at that specific time now with all that said it would give reason as to why someone like Lucas Raps hasn't been as successful as he should be despite being signed to Def Jam. I mean, he's one artist who does seem like he's been shelved, whereas other artists like Nasty C have been given more of a spotlight, and I'm just hoping that won't be the case for Blackie. But we'll see down the line where the problem starts to arise, because we don't want another situation like we're seeing play out with Zuchi Coke Dope and Stay Low, but I guess time will reveal all. But you guys, let me know your thoughts on this. Do you believe Blackie made the right choice by signing to Def Jam? Or do you think he'll regret it in the end? Comment down below. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to hit that like button if you found the content dope. And hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It's on to the next one. Peace.